him on board, Jeff Dennis as well, try and analyze what the Fed minutes indicate. With him, Jeff, hi, good morning and good evening to you. Uh, I think the most alarming statement has been from Fed's Barkin, right? Indicating that further interest rate increases are possible and still being considered. That's not going to go down well with the markets, I presume. No, I, I think it's been one of the factors that have led to this very, very weak start to the year. I mean, I think the market was very, very vulnerable to some profit taking, which I think this is a, this is all this is, frankly, at this point. Obviously, very, very strong December, very strong fourth quarter. It was a sort of perfect rally, price for perfection. And I think as soon as there's any doubt brought into this scenario, um, in particular on the, on when the Fed may cut, and indeed, could they possibly even raise interest rates again? I think there was going to be a fair amount of profit taking, and uh, and obviously you've seen bond yields go up at the ten year end by about uh, nearly fifteen basis points off the low. The dollar is stronger. All of this is contributing, but I, I don't think anything much has changed. Frankly, um, obviously valuations are high in the U.S. and indeed in many other markets too. But at the end of the day, um, uh, Barkin may have caught the market when it was very vulnerable to a sell-off. But I'd be still very, very surprised if the Fed raises rates again. Uh, Mr. Dennis, uh, what we saw in 2023 was largely a function of those, uh, you know, massive U.S. tech stocks which rallied on back of AI. Now, AI is not new. It is not going to be the new idea for 2024. So what could be the trigger in that case? Um, I mean, for a start, I think it's going to be a, a more subdued year than, than 2023 was, at least in the U.S. I think EM is maybe a somewhat different story. That very much will depend on how China does. I, I think it's going to be a more conventional year, although, to be fair, although AI may have been a big driver of the tech stocks, the tech sector, the NASDAQ, and, of course, the so-called Magnificent Seven. At the end of the day, as I said earlier, you had a perfect uh, storm later on of lower bond yields, a softer dollar, sense that the Fed has is, is, is got to the peak of interest rates, and uh, all of that was encouraging investors to move into equities. And I think the reason why, despite the slow start to the year, this, we should be mildly bullish, I would just say mildly bullish for 2024, is because I do believe there's a very good chance we will engineer a soft landing here in the U.S. In other words, there won't be a recession. The Fed will cut interest rates, although maybe not until towards the middle of the year. And all of that, I think, ultimately will bring money back to equities. And I think, therefore, the the driver is going to be much more a sort of conventional market move, I think, driven by, you know, optimism. The economy could be uh, able to stabilize without going into a recession. And we'll be we'll see a, a modest growth of growth rate of the economy in 2024. And that's going to be the driver of stocks. But clearly, what's very important for stocks is that interest rates eventually come down in the U.S., and also bond yields tick a little bit lower. I don't think they're going to go much lower, but I think they could go 20, 30, 40 basis points lower over the course of the year. So it's going to be more conventional macro triggers, I think, this year. Thanks very much, uh, Jeff, for giving us those details.